everyone, it's Marla. Welcome to another video teaching going along with 365 Prophecy. This is our Bible study in which we're taking a look at Old Testament prophecies which are predicting the Messiah to come and we're looking at their fulfillment in the New Testament by Jesus. Um, please do feel free to join us. We are just on uh, 365 Prophecy number 24. You can join by going to injesusname.net and subscribe and you'll start getting the teachings, written and videos sent directly to your email inbox. So welcome if you're, if you're joining us for the first time. Um, today's prophecy, we're continuing on with something we've been discussing for a couple of days now and that is prophecies wrapped up in the instructions for the Passover. The Passover instructions are being given to Moses by God uh, right before God institutes this 10th plague on the land of Egypt and God is telling Moses how the Israelite people can um, have the, the, the death that God is going to purvey on the firstborn of all the people and beasts in the land of Egypt, how, how they can have this death pass by them. And all of the instructions center around the killing of a spotless lamb. We found out that this lamb is not only a spotless male lamb of one years old, but um, he also, this little baby lamb, has to stay in the homes of the Israelites for two weeks so they get to know him and care for him before they, they kill him. And in today's verse, a prophecy verse, we're going to see there's a little bit more detail regarding this lamb that was to be sacrificed so that his blood would be painted on the doorpost of the Israelite people and that blood was going to be a sign that God should pass over that home and not destroy the firstborn uh, person or beast of that household. And so we're going to read today the, uh, one more instruction about the Passover lamb, and it's found in Exodus 12, 46. Let me read it, and then I'll discuss. Exodus 12, 46 states, It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. Now, all of that it language is talking about the Passover lamb this little one-year-old male lamb. And um, you see that not only are they going to sacrifice the lamb and paint the blood, but they're going to have to eat this baby lamb that they've cared for for two weeks. And as they are killing it and even doing the process of cooking it, none of the baby lamb's bones should be broken. That is part of the instruction. And so um, this is fulfilled in the New Testament by Jesus, um, his body, when it was hung on the cross, none of his bones were to be broken. We have already discovered that Jesus is obviously the Passover lamb, our Passover lamb, the spotless one who was to be sacrificed on the cross, his blood poured out so that the angel of uh, death or, or God would pass over our sin because the, the spotless lamb, Jesus, had taken our sin with him onto the cross. And so we know that Jesus is our Passover lamb. And here in the verse that fulfills this, um, this prophecy about his bones not being broken, we are going to see that fulfillment in John 19, 31 through 36. I'm going to read the whole thing, and then I'll talk about it in context a little bit. And you're going to see how amazing it is that this prophecy was fulfilled. So John 19, 31 states, Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Now all this is talking about Jesus and the two robbers that have been crucified alongside of him. So that's the they. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. That's Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. 
His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place, that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. So there you can see John, the Apostle John, who is writing this, is saying that he's the one that saw this happen. He saw the spirit go, go into Jesus' Jesus's side. He can bear witness, his testimony is true, that Jesus was dead by what he saw, the blood and the, the water coming out of Jesus. And um, all of this, John is saying, is meant to fulfill the prophecy verse that we just talked about, and there's actually some other prophecies in the Old Testament about the bones not being broken. But John is saying, I can bear witness, and all this is to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. So it's clear as well that this is the New Testament verse that, that fulfills our 365 prophecy number 24. But when you think about it, the miracle of this is that no bones were broken. And I say that because there were multiple instances in the crucifixion of Jesus where his bones could be broken, um, namely, obviously, the the horrific treatment of Jesus before he ever got to the cross, but then, of course, in the crucifixion itself. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that the Roman soldiers who crucified people at that time, they were absolutely um, masterful professionals at crucifixion. They knew exactly how to do it and there was a very certain way. The crucifixion had to happen so that a nail would go here in between the radius and the humerus. Uh, on this side of the wrist bones which would be here, the nail would be here so that the nail wouldn't come through the wrist bones and the hand. The, the, these bones act as a stopper if, if you will. They also knew enough to put the nail in the person's foot through the person's feet in such a way that they could still utilize their heel in order to push up. Now, this all gets into something we talked about in one of the written teachings. Um, when a person was crucified, quite often what they would do was they would put a little platform beneath that person's heels that the person could push up on. And that pushing up was the thing that made it so that the crucifixion would go on for days at times. This is why in these verses, they are asking, the people who, who are asking um, that, that Jesus' Jesus's legs be broken, this is why they're asking it. They want to bring down these bodies before the Sabbath because they were not to perform work on the Sabbath. And so they didn't want this these these people to be hanging on the cross into the next day where they would have to do work in taking them down no work was supposed to be happening on the sabbath and so they were asking if please could these three could their legs be broken so that they would die sooner how that would work is crucifixion the way that somebody died from crucifixion was not bleeding to death they would die from asphyxiation and so that little platform under their legs was part of this when their arms were stretched out their back was on the cross there would be bleeding internal bleeding that would happen and there would be um, fluid filling up in their lungs and then plus their back would be against the cross and it would be stretched so tight they couldn't get a breath deep breath and so they would push up on that platform with their heels so that they could get a breath get a little bit more breath and this would go on for hours sometimes days keeping the person alive and you can imagine how agonizing that was to the person to push up on their heels this is why, as I said, those Roman soldiers wanted to keep the heel free to push up on. But meanwhile, what they would do is take the nail and put it through the foot bones in such a way that the heel bone, the large, it's called calcaneus, the large heel bone wouldn't be pierced, but also the talus, which is one of the large ankle bones, it wouldn't be pierced. That nail had to go through the the bones that would be here, if you think about the arch bones of your of your foot a little bit lower right before the toe, there would have to be a nail here in order so that they could push up on their heel and because they, they were cruel, they wanted this crucifixion to go on as long as possible. They just, they weren't happy with the person just dying. They wanted them up there 
the person was naked, they wanted them embarrassed, just for your knowledge, they weren't up high as sometimes you see uh, Jesus, you know, um, crucified. You'll see the picture of him up high. No, he was pretty much in those days. The, the crucified people were eye level, so people could come up and spit, spit on them, harass them to their face. It was horrific, and they wanted it to go on and on. But these folks who wanted to take the bodies down were asking, "Can you please break the bones?" And when they got to Jesus, they didn't have to break his leg bones causing him to not be able to push up because he was already dead. That in itself is a miracle um, that he was already dead because, like I said, they would, in, in, you know, you just inherently want to breathe and you'd push up. Now, a lot of people believe that the reason why Jesus was already dead was because of the brutality of what happened to him before he ever got to the cross, that he actually bled to death of the wounds of the flogging and the scourging and all that that happened to him before he ever got to the cross. So mercifully, he died before the leg bones were broken. His leg bones were broken. But more than that, that happened. He died before they, they came to break the leg bones because he had to fulfill this prophecy. Um, also, when you read this, you see there was a spear put up into his side to prove that he was dead. They, they were going to, if he wasn't really dead, they were going to break his leg bones. So they took a spear up and under his rib cage, pierced his pericardial sac, that the sac that surrounds the heart, to see if he was actually dead or to kill him. When blood and water came out, it's, it's really blood and serum that came out, they knew, John knew, the Roman guards who were experts at this knew he was actually dead because it takes a while for the blood and the serum to settle out into where there's two clear liquids that come out from the pericardial sac after death. And so everybody was very, very clear that Jesus was dead because of the fact that that spear went up and blood and, and serum came out. But just think about that. What would it have take for a, for a spear to go up there and not hit a rib? No broken ribs either. So miracle upon miracle of, regarding no broken bones to fulfill this prophecy back in Exodus 12, 46. It says no bones of our Passover lamb, Jesus, the Messiah, could be broken. It's a very, very... Um, I mean, the whole thing is miraculous, and, and what's even more miraculous is the fact that our Jesus, no bones broken, our sin washed away by his death on that cross, proven by the spear in his side, um, he died up there. And, and, I'm, and I'm making a, um, a strong point of this because there are people out there to this day, cults and just regular people that say, well, you know, he never really died. It wasn't really proven that he died. There was an imposter up there. It wasn't even Jesus. Or nobody really saw him taken down. And so, you know, he when he came down, he was actually dead. And they, they stole him away. He was never put in the grave. Nope. These verses that we just read in John 19 prove that he was dead up there. And that's one of the linchpins to the Christian faith. That Jesus died. A spotless God died on the cross, taking our sin with him so that we could be spotless on the day of our death in front of God. We have got to, if we want to enter heaven, we've got to go there with no sin, spotless. And Jesus predicted that he would do this, promised he would do this, that he would go to the cross to take the sin of the world. And so he had to die up there so that our sin could be uh, punished on Jesus's body instead of our our bodies taking the punishment. So this was a crucial piece, is a crucial piece, piece to our faith. Je Jesus had to die. And so proven in these verses. Aside from that, Jesus had to raise, raise from the dead because honestly speaking, there were some people in the New Testament that, that were raised from the dead and, um, and that is, I guess, not, you know, not the end of the story for them. They, Lazarus, the 12-year-old uh, young girl, there was also a young man, the son of a, of a woman who came to Jesus. They all were dead, and Jesus rose them from the, he, you know, he brought them back from the dead. But all of those people, they lived out their life and died, and right now they're still dead. Jesus died, rose from the grave, and then he walked around for 40 days to show everybody 
that he was truly back from the dead alive and then he ascended to heaven where he's still alive right now so jesus is the only person man god who was killed rose from the grave and continues to live right now and that is where we get our hope that if jesus could predict that he was going to die be buried raised from the dead and continue to live on eternally then we know we are guaranteed that every single thing that he said was true and if he could predict his death burial and resurrection then that means he's god if he could predict it and then fulfill it that 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 guy that jesus who said all that he's absolutely god because only god could predict it fulfill it and then continue to live on to this to this day and that that truly is the linchpin to the christian faith the, the bible itself says um new testament verse says that you know we are we are ridiculous people as christians if jesus did not resurrect from the grave and continues to live on today that this whole thing is just a, a, a farce well jesus proved it this is in acts 1 3 if you want to look at the verse that says that jesus resurrected from the grave walked around for 40 days and then we see in in the gospels about his ascension so he um he he died he resurrected he continues to live today and that means that jesus is the messiah the one that came to be the passover lamb no bones broken on that cross and he continues to live on today all right so i hope this encourages you to um, just believe in even more deeply in the miracle of, of Jesus taking our sin on the cross and um, dying and raising again from the, from, the, from the grave and living on uh, so that we can meet him when we go to heaven as believers. All right, thank you so much, and we'll see you again next time. Bye now.